If you want to move to or inside of Germany, housing is an important aspect. Houses in Germany are built for living. While this is quite obvious in Western and Central Europe, there are other areas in the world where houses are just made for sleeping and cooking, while the life is outside, even on the streets or places. Houses in Germany are also built to last almost a hundred years, and many buildings from medieval times or neoclassicism are still in use. But even the kind of traditional houses and the kind they were built or roofed are different from federal state to federal state and even from county to county. In the north of Germany they usually build half-timbered or brick-lined houses with thatched roofs, through the lack of wood and stone quarries, while in the Black Forest area traditional houses are made fully out of wood. Where you had quarries you could use that stones to build and if there was slate around you used that for a slated roof. When houses were needed very fast, in the GDR many flats were made as Plattenbauten, building made with precast concrete slabs, while concrete was used in Germany typically for higher buildings and bridges. Houses were built with bricks and later specialized building stones like proton or gas concrete, what made it lighter and had a better insulation. Today some houses are also prefabricated, what becomes more and more popular. And while most Germans like their space to live, some choose a tiny home. Only a few federal states have regulations how much space a human needs and where it is regulated. It is almost 9 square meters per adult and at least 6 square meters per child. Usually the Germans have much bigger houses, so every family member could have its own room. In Germany about half of the people live in rented houses or flats while the other half lives in their own houses and flats. Both houses and flats are available for rent or for purchase. If you want to purchase a house the purchase has to be notarially certified. If a real estate broker is part of the contract usually seller and buyer each pay half of the procuration fee. If there is a real estate broker for a house or flat for rent, the landlord has to pay the broker as he appointed him. Of course, if the renter appoints the real estate broker, he will pay him. The cheapest way for all is to find a next tenant, as the landlord does not need to advert or to take a broker, and you easily can hand over some goods from tenant to tenant, for example a built-in kitchen or other furniture. But how much does it cost to rent a flat or to buy a house? This really depends on the area and on the type of housing. Here you see a map with the price areas as a whole. You see that in some areas like Munich, Berlin, Frankfurt or Düsseldorf the rents are very high while in other areas they are quite low. In this video I look upon three areas. Munich, a well-known town with about 1.5 million citizens, it is the capital of Bavaria. Monks settled there about 1150 AD. After this the town was founded and later became a Dussel and Imperatorial residency. The first railroad station was built in 1839. We have a U-Bahn or subway and a S-Bahn or streetcars an international airport, an unemployment rate of 2.5% and universities. Aachen in North Rhine-Westphalia is a town of about 250,000 citizens next to the Dutch and Belgian border. People lived there since 2000 BC regularly. The Romans created a settlement 100 AD and later it became a royal residency. There is a railroad station since 1841. We have an S-Bahn, an international airport 30 kilometers away in the Netherlands, an unemployment rate of 6.8% and several universities. And Salzwedel in Saxony-Anhalt. It is a town with about 23,000 citizens and was near the inner German border. The city is famous for their Baumkuchen. 
people lived here since 1000 BC regularly and the foundation is known since 1112 AD. There is a railroad station since 1870 and an unemployment rate of 6.5%. The next university is about 100 km away in Magdeburg or about 150 km away in Hamburg or Hanover. I looked upon three kinds of houses or flats. Flats for rent of about 40 square meters for a single or a couple. Houses for rent of about 100 square meters for a couple with one or two kids. Houses to buy of 120 square meters for a couple with one or several kids. I searched on the German website Immowelt, but there are other websites for flats and houses as well. Usually you should pay about a third of your income for housing. The amount for the rents a Kaltmiete, rent for a house or apartment exclusive of heating and other additional costs. So costs for heating, water and electricity, television or phone and internet will be on top. Heating and water are almost part of the incidental costs, sometimes with costs for cleaning and garbage or cable TV. Electricity, television, phone and internet are usually contracts you make on your own. Okay, every household in Germany will pay the public broadcast contribution, but if you want to see Netflix, Amazon or similar, you make your own contract. The prices for the houses to buy are without a possible procuration fee or the notarial charges. I just wanted to give you an overview about some prices and the areas where the houses are located. But we also could see some phrases and typical things about German houses and I will explain some typical issues with the AdWords as an example. For rent you will see three values, the monthly rent, the living space in square meters and the number of rooms. We start with the small flats in the smallest of our three towns. The first flat is a typical small flat in the Souterrain, what is the basement. You see the windows on the street level. It is not uncommon to have some rooms or flats at that level, especially in urban areas. These flats are usually cheaper than flats on higher floors and this flat is central gelegen, so in the center of the town. On the right you see the ground plan. You see a corridor, then a kitchen and a bathroom with separated shower and bath tube and on the opposite side a room. In Germany we count in the way two rooms, kitchen, bath and balcony. Neither kitchen or bath or a separate toilet are counted as rooms. But the rooms could be living rooms, bedrooms, dining rooms, offices or else. Very often there is an abbreviation KBB for Küche, Bad, Balkon, Kitchen, Bath, Balcony. The second flat is renoviert, renovated. Maybe there were no pictures on the first flat because it was not renovated. Renovated means fresh paint or wallpapered, maybe new floors. Here you see also a built-in kitchen. You don't have to expect a built-in kitchen in the kitchen if it is not mentioned. Even no lamps at the ceiling, it really depends on the flat or house. This built-in kitchen surely has all you need. I see a sink and an oven with a cooking zone above. Above this there is an exhaust hood in the cupboard. I think there will be no dishwater. If you don't see a refrigerator, it is on the left behind the large door. Maybe the door below is a freezer. As there were not so much little flats in Salzwedel, the second one is in a small rural town of 2,800 citizens 10 km outside to the north in Low Saxony. Here you see this rural town of Wustrow. I see at least six bus stations, an automated teller machine, two grocery stores, two kindergartens and a school, an elementary school. Furthermore, some restaurants, many playgrounds and sports fields. So even if this is a really small rural town near a small town, it would fit the needs of a small family. Besides this apartment surely would not be leased to more than two people. 
Let's have a look at Aachen. First, we have a refurbished, frisch saniert apartment. Here they made an update on windows, electrical lines or plumbing or all of these. The view from the window shows it is to the back of the house. That could be a reason why they write in ruhiger Innenstadtlage in a quiet central address. They also mention to the basic price of 455 euro the Warmmiete rent for a house or apartment including additional costs such as heating of 605 euro. A third of the Kaltmiete for incidental costs is quite normal. These costs are an anticipation. At the end of the year the landlord will have a look how much you heated and how much water you used and will make the bill. At the end you have to pay a bit more or get money back. The second flat is fully furnished, möbliert. So here is everything inside, a kitchen, a bed, cupboards, table and chairs. You can also see a washing machine. As the cook field is separated, the kitchen seems to be on a very basic level. The first one was a bit smaller and a bit more expensive and it was right in the center. This one is in an urban quarter, but we have the address. So here you see the exact address and the bus station and two universities. This is right in the middle. I did not show the other places as it would be too much to see anything. You may see two restaurants to the north, probably one Greek and one Chinese restaurant, and you also could walk into the park to the grilling area in the west. Now we have a look at Munich. The first flat is in the urban quarter Obergiesing, about five kilometers away from the city center. This house seems to be made in the 70s or 80s. It is quite cheap for Munich. The second one has a built-in kitchen and a balcony. You see the price for the cult meat in Salzwedel was about 215 to 250 euro. In Aachen it was 370 to 450 euro. And here in Munich it is from 470 to 690 euro. Let's have a look at the bigger apartments. We start in Salzwedel. This flat is an unusual apartment house and has its own entrance from outside, eigenem Eingang. This is different than the building you saw in Munich or in the background. It has a terrace. The difference to a balcony is usually that the terrace is on the ground level and often bigger. It also has a winter garden. If this has a heater, the full space could count to the total size, if not only the half. We see some furniture, but there is no möbliert mentioned, so it may be the photos were made while the actual tenant is still living there, and there will be no furniture when the new tenant will move in. The second flat is a typical flat in an apartment building. As this is an older building than the other one, without special features, this second flat is bigger and cheaper. With six rooms you would have a bedroom for the parents, a dining room, a living room and three rooms for the kids. In Aachen we have a first flat in a good neighborhood. Such a neighborhood is usually quiet and clean. This is 2.5 kilometers away from the city center and a swimming pool is in the quarter. The second flat is a bit smaller and cheaper. On the picture on the right you see a kitchen without the built-in kitchen. You just see the tiled backsplash and circuit points for water and electricity. In Munich our first flat is modern and as usual total white. Landlords like to have white walls, it looks bigger, every furniture will fit and the tenant can afterwards color the walls in the way they want. Therefore at the end when the tenant leaves he usually has to paint all walls white again. There is a special appointment to view a offene Besichtigung. So on that date all interest parties could come and see the flat and the landlord could check it on one date. The second flat has again furniture pictures but no mentioning of furniture. 
we see again the prices. The cult meat in Salzwedel was between 600 and 619 euros. In Aachen it was 741 to 1050 euros. And here in Munich it is from 1820 to 2240 euro. Now we want to buy a house. Now we will see four values. The price for the house, the living space in square meters, the rooms and the land area around the house in square meters. We start in Salzwedel again. The first one is a Reihen Endhaus, a end of terrace house. With a small property, it is reconstructed, has a cellar and the whole building. As we know the address, we could see the surroundings. You see the house on the top right edge. The bus station is directly in front of the house and the kindergarten directly behind the house. The house is 1.5 kilometers away from the city center, so we wouldn't need a car at all. And the next grocery store is 550 meters away and the railroad station about 700. This is quite typical for small towns to have everything within walking distance. The second house is a bit cheaper and has a very big land area. You see that the house is quite old. Maybe there lived an older person and the hares want to sell the house. In the middle you see an old tile stove. On the left I see a small device below the window that may be an electric heater. So it could be that there is no heating system that may be a reason for the cheap price. On that size of land you easily could have some pets, maybe a horse. Let's have a look at Aachen. The first building is mentioned as a ein zwei Familien house, a one or two family house. So there may be the possibility to live in one part and be a landlord for the second part. It has a double garage and an additional parking position. Ruhig gelegen means it is in a quiet area, probably a bit outside the city center. The second house is a small city house. It seems to be a mid-terrace house. The big window in the ground floor could have been a shop window. In the city center, the house often had shops in the ground floor and flats in the upper floors. You can see on the other picture that the garden has a separate entrance to the street behind. We only know this house is in the quarter of Haaren. Here you see the bus stations, schools, playgrounds and kindergartens in that area. If you also want to see the restaurants, bars and grocery stores, doctors and pharmacies, you see that everything is around in walking distance. We go to Munich. Perlach is a quarter about six kilometers away from the center. It is a mist terrace house with a small land area with a single garage. Bezugsfrei means vacant. Nobody is living here, so you can move in immediately. Sometimes houses are sold when people are still living there as they want to move at a certain time or if it's a tenement, there are still tenants. The second house is about 10 kilometers away from the city center. The word Generalsanierung means you have to make renewals before you move in. This could mean you have to make a new electric lines or new plumbing, new windows or even the roof. Again, we saw that the prices in Munich are much higher than in Aachen and in Salzwedel where the lowest prices. Because of this, the wages in Munich are usually a bit higher than in many other parts of Germany. And of course, prices are higher where many people search for a flat. So you can't say how much housing costs in Germany. It is always about the region and what you want to have. Do you have further questions on housing in Germany? What kind of housing do you prefer? Renting an apartment where the landlord is responsible for all repairs or having your own house? Would you prefer to live in the countryside or in the middle of a big town? Write it down in the comments and thank you for watching. See you next time.